side. Well, so save it. We'll, we'll do it in front of the group. Would you coach specifically save it with your feet? Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that now. So, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. 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 We are going to work through until half twelve. He will lunch before, break for lunch at half twelve. Okay. So, just as a reminder, on your tables you've got laminated versions of two of the techniques. So, I've shared this on the high group as well. So, just from the level one and level two, technical manual. So, just to recap, then some of the key things to just go through. Those that I didn't cover was the high dive and save. We didn't do one-to-one -one massively, and then dealing with crosses, and then obviously distribution we didn't cover massively. But there's that on the high group if you need it, and that's replicated in the handouts that are there, so you can take photos of those as you wish. I just want to show you some stuff from last night. Really? <laughs> in fact, what comes up? Let's do that. I saw you had you got tackled once right before the battle. Oh, oh, there are any arms no, I think that's good. Okay, so this took me a little while, so I had to re watch the game and then freeze frame the actual moment. But um, yeah, I got there in the end, I think I captured the exact moments just that. So, start position, we'll go through that. So, we talked about this kind of not on our toes, because otherwise you would get players to do this and then they wobble around. So, you're not on your toes, that, that's not a thing being on your toes, it's having your weight slightly forward, there's a difference. It's on the balls of your feet. Yeah, yeah. balls of your feet, weight slightly forward, as opposed to on your toes, as young players will do that, and that's not good because they then lost the spring, they have to go back down to then spring, all right? So see the start position, um, straight away, so Kepler's already in that kind of position, anticipating the shot, so he has his hands maybe a bit lower to the side. Some players will have them here, ready to reach up, other players will have them here so that they can go down, it's a preference, obviously. Um, and then you see here, so I think the ball drop, if it's crossed in, he's in a ready position, and the ball drops to a Roby here, um, he scores, but you see that the strike there, so you see Kepa's gone from this position here, he's anticipating the shot, he's then thrown his hand back, which the hair does as well. Spanish ball people. Yeah, it's oh. throw your hand back, because then that puts your weight forward, and then you're into the save. So again, some players will stay here and they'll spring. Some players will have a lot of trigger. So it'll be a little movement. You'll see his is that because then he'll spring into the shot. Well, you're not going to save that shot, but you, you notice that little trigger movement. He's gone like that, ready to make the save. But sometimes I think it might just be psychological. You make a little trigger, that means you're ready. Um, so I just to add on that because I know as coaches we all try and take this stuff and embed it in our players. I was fortunate enough to be on a CPD with Eric Steele. He used to be United's main coach, Walt De Gea over, and he literally, up on this topic, he said, whatever the goalies are comfortable with, you just help them get better at that. Don't try and enforce your version of what that looks like on them, because you'll undo all their good stuff, uh, and it will just become unnatural and uncomfortable. So if they have a preference, find a way to help them be better at that preference. A lot of goalkeepers' triggers will be their foot, so it'll be like a little, be like a little shuffle there, and then that's set. But again, I think the idea here is if you throw your arms back, then the momentum carries you forward or sideways. I think it's the idea. What's your preference? Yeah, go on. Is, is that obviously what you're just saying about um, not coaching something out of the goalkeeper? Is that why a lot of these keepers, like what I find from board as well, that come and play in our league, they bring their own personal coaches? They might well do, because yeah. they've grown up with that. I think it's another reluctant example from Eric Steele. So De Gea, he saves a lot with his feet. Um, and I think one of the, it was kind of on that topic, so he didn't have a coach with him. But he said to Eric Steele, the goalkeeper coach, I will, what I want is I want you to give me 100 saves with my feet every practice. So on that point, Eric Steele didn't have to do that. Well, he wouldn't do that with another keeper. So, he would, so De Gea makes saves with his feet all the time. And he said, I want 100 shots at my feet. I'm not going to use my hands, just feet. Hitting the corners of each goal. So if they've got a preference, then they might bring their own keepers for that reason, because they've grown up with that. So on that, style. on that basis, what they've grown up with, which is fine and comfortable for them, but as a coach or a keeper coach, what would you try to install from your own ways of coaching, your own style, like what you kind of want from I think, your keepers? Well? I think for me, you, you can talk about the, the right technique, but there's no such thing as a right technique. If they're keeping it out of the net and making the saves, and, and or they're powering it, it's going away from distance, then 
it's difficult to argue with them and say, well, no, you should be doing it like this. It's only if they're making mistakes where you might want to then suggest certain techniques. But I wouldn't be too prescriptive. Same with anything. I think, I know you guys were here yesterday, but yesterday day before we talked about receiving on the back foot. As coaches, we always teach our players to receive on the back foot. Actually, there's a time when that's not the right decision. Sometimes something creative, a little spin in behind. You, you're not necessarily going to coach that, but if they're making a save, then mm. don't worry too much. Actually, you know when I stepped in and said, like, the, the kid who let it roll through the legs spun and got the shot off? And I'm, that's his player. Oh, this is Sherman. So I've referenced one of your players. Remember the kid who got me the ball turn in your visit? Unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah. It's exactly the same principle we're keeping. They're keeping it out and they're doing that super save, superman save, fine. If it's a different technique, like Shamichael came and did that, well, we were not going to coach him to do it differently because he was the best at it. And now other people copy him. So they will be keepers that have little, kind of, their own little quirks, I guess. Um, but yeah. I think that would extend to the like, outfield players as well. Yeah, that's what that's what we said. Like, don't don't be too like you have to do it like this. Yeah, yeah. If your player does something and oh, it's not received on the back foot, line, for example, yeah, just fans goals, then you wouldn't want to take the stuff off yeah. away from them. Foot, you get futsal players, they toe punt because in futsal, a toe punt is a legitimate type of finish mm -hmm. because you kick it, it's, you kick it harder, toe punt, and and you can no use that lift. Yeah, no back lift, bang, smashing it in the back of the net. So some outfield players will do that. And I've heard coach say we can't toe punt it, but it's just flown in the top corner. What you don't want to do is get in a situation where you say to a player, you've got to do it like this, they do it their own way and score in the goal, and then you'll say, no, don't do it like that. Because then they legitimately turn around and say, I just made a great save. There was a couple of Brazilian strikers, like Romario and uh, the Beto, who said, had those type of finishes. Well, now Dino did it yeah. in Chelsea as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Topan. Yeah. No one would have coached that, but if it happens, it happens. And if, and if they're making a save and it's always dropping into the danger area, then you might want to be suggesting to them, well, actually, your technique is stopping the shot, but what about where it's going? <laughs> then you might need to coach a different technique. It might be a halfway between what the FA techniques are and what they're doing. It might not look exactly like that. It might not look exactly what they started with. You might have to come up with an adapt, but yeah, don't try and say you have to do it like this. This is just an example. And when you're starting out, you should maybe try and start out doing these techniques, young goalkeepers. The older goalkeepers, you're not going to get bad habits out of them, and they might actually be good habits. It just doesn't look like that. Just off the bat, obviously, if they're comfortable with doing certain things, that's that they're going up with. If you have a say a creative up, uh, way of stopping a shot or stopping a goal, how would you implement that it's towards your keeper? Would you? Push that upon them if you have that creative way, well, you can demo, show them, trial and error. They can have a go their way, your way, a few other ways, and they'll then naturally start to come with one that they're comfortable with. Like Jax has a slightly different way of coming out, 1v1. I can show him my way, but he will probably still feel more comfortable the way he does it. So if you've got one, show them, give that advice, and let them trial it. And if it works better, they'll adopt it. Yeah. Well, I know you, yeah, I'll just uh, you mentioned start position, and I know we were talking more specifically about how he's set and, and etc. But in terms of where he physically is in the goal, what are your thoughts on his start position from that perspective? I'm not a goalkeeping expert, so things like that I'm not necessarily. You could argue if he was a bit further out, yeah. A bit further this way, he looks very close to his left, close yeah. to me. Yeah. We've probably got the wrong angle, but I know the angle from behind the goal. There's just not a chance he's saving them. Right. And bear in mind, I guess the ball, the ball initially came from this way. So he probably was across the other side and he shuffled across. Maybe if we had a different angle, he might be too far the other way. Possibly. You he might be the middle. He might be he's just there because he can now see the ball. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. He might. He may have made an adjustment to, to have a look. Uh, yeah. I guess it's easy with hindsight. We know where that ball's going, don't we? As well. Yeah, we, we know it's going across him. That oh. ball's come from there, hasn't it? And it went back post. That's just been headed out from there. Yeah, so he's gone across. To, to, it was to headed across. Yeah. So he was going there. to make a save that was there. So yeah. if, if the ball was there, because I think someone was about to take a shot and ricochet back off, so he probably was in the right position for that shot, and then can't necessarily get back across. Yeah, because I think that was it at the top there. Was when he headed it back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. lands that. Uh, you all yeah. So he's gone there to make the save, but it actually went that way. It came off someone and then he, yeah, so you could argue that. Say the ball hadn't been headed out, get rid of all the players in the box and you put a wave in the ball, where would you advise him to stand? I personally wouldn't ask him to stand centrally. No, you don't want, no, you don't want to. I don't think, I don't think he's half a step left. What, what kind of question is that? that? That's like saying, 
if you took a free kick without a ball, the goalie would never stand where they stand where the ball is. No, but what I'm asking is, where would you, where would you put him? Like, I'm saying that the, possibly the reason he stood there is because of the players in the area, but if people are saying that he's wrong, where would they put him? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that's wrong. I don't know. Sweet, sweet person. Here's the question. Where he's positioned, I'm not comfortable. Mm -hmm. If I saw it, I'm, if I'm his coach, I'm not comfortable. Considering he's got Luis, he's got, I think, Kente at the top, and he's got Emerson just in front of him. That's it. You would move yeah. him this way? I would move him more, more centrally, because as far as I'm concerned, I'll be trusting my defenders to, to put the pressure on them and block that shot. If they score from having those defenders inside there and he goes to his left, I'm not going to complain yeah. to him or her, because as far as I'm concerned, I'm trusting my defenders to put that pressure on them, I'm going to be looking at them or what they I mean, bear in mind, this is happening in a split second, yeah. so it's, yeah, it's okay. tricky, but you're right with your players, if you spot that and you've got the ability to analyse sessions and video them, and you can slow it down, then you can maybe critique it and analyse it, um, maybe a half a step right, maybe, he's still going to have got that though. Yeah. Mate, I hate Arsenal, but I think you're taking away from an unbelievable. I don't personally think there's too much wrong, personally. But I'm no goalkeeping expert. Um, okay, I'm just not so sit, if you're getting here, so again, I'm trying to capture the exact moment, it's quite difficult, pretty screen on my phone. Again, I'm trying to capture the exact moment, it's quite difficult, pretty screen on my phone. Uh, start position again, so you may have in that position, and then as, the, as you see Wooden about to strike it, you may have that sort of movement. Again, it's that trigger, that set position, but you see that check doing it there. Um, start position here. Again, this was a strike that could just clip the crossbar. You can see already, similar to that one there, you can straight away see that it was in that position, so his hands have already gone out. He knows what's about to happen. His feet as well. Yeah, his feet, yeah. his feet have gone here, so he's ready because he knows what's about to come. And then you notice that. Step. 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 Okay. So you've got the start position here. And then you notice the step rather than here and dive, it's step, because you can see that spring, you can straight away see the angle, and then he, he does pretty much cover it actually. I think it, if it had gone under the crossbar, would have, he would have saved it. So, but that step is really important because it allows the spring which gets him to cover the goal. So that's really important, that little step. Quick question. Yes. Right hand or left hand then? So you go to his left. Honest answer? Top hand. I'm, yeah, I've heard Garkey just talk about that as well, so I, so I don't think there's any right answer, but for me, I'd probably be going Because you're at your highest point, you're yeah. your highest, you're like that, you've got... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's a whole set of fingers low. Well, that's that's you get, though, if you save it, it does that, is it? Well, yeah, people will argue that. Actually, yeah. 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 So, let's say you're starting position in terms of physically rear in the goal, let's say you've been at, like, three steps to the right. Yeah. Would you have coached him to take more than one step to dive because he was out of position? To his left, sorry. Was if he doesn't need... To his left. So it, let's say he, he was by the S's on the spec. Yeah. And then he thought, hang on a minute, that's going top right. So would you have said two or three steps before he dived? The ball was hit bloody hard. So <laughs> yeah, it, you're yeah. effectively having to go to, to that. Yeah. I think the ball would be past him. Yeah. Up and on to so. I think in that ideal world, I said that I gave you a coaching yeah, good night. Nice. So Kelly was trying to get to the far corner and she was almost trying to get there with her whole body. So rather than a step or dive. So some people, like young goalkeepers, like, they'll try and move to get behind it. The dive would be better. But I think in that situation, I don't think he's got time personally. If he had been the other side, I think he would have been properly thrown himself rather than taking a step. Um, okay, so the punch versus catch. I couldn't catch the first one. But in terms of the punch versus cap, this came in from Maitland Niles who hit the ball in. Um, you can see there, I mean, you can see the position of the hands already. So he tried to punch it, or he did punch it, but you can see the hands straight away crossed over. So there was no punch there, and he should have caught it anyway. But again, goalkeepers on the continent might be a little bit more prone to that. He's under no pressure and should have caught it. He went for the punch, and his hands do that, so the punch just skew off over there. So that was just to show that. Why would you have a punch rather than catch it? I understand that. It's like a slide tackle. Well, it's it's distribution, so you're starting an attack, not that you necessarily. Some goalkeeper will be able to actually guide it and start an attack. It's quite difficult, though. Well, sure, some catch it. The da there are dangerous issues drop it. Sometimes, if you, if, you, if you can't catch or you've got pressure on you, and it's, if you go to catch and you're leaning back, say, and you drop it, or if you go with a punch or maybe even a flip, or some of you go to do flip, you're just helping the ball on beyond. But as for the credit, for example, he did a great uh, header 
the linebacker's there, at the near post, and he just flicked it, he went over, and uh, was it Kasnac couldn't actually hit it at yeah. uh, that point. Yeah. So a goalkeeper um, might actually just get flicked to help it on. Or so it's to a safer the... option for some yeah. goalkeepers, rather than me trying to catch it and drop it, and then have to worry about distribution, I just yeah. need to get it right. Yeah. The technique's quite difficult, I find, anyway. What, so, what, what I've noticed as well, is just going by the, the side of whether it's Tigna or what has been credited, I find a lot of the keepers depends on what league they've come from as well, because if you look at the league and stuff, teams expect their keepers to punch it, whether you're attacking or you're defending, whatever goal it is. Whereas over here in the Premier because it's quite cross your boat in the box, where we're looking for the first and second balls. I don't think they tend to focus on that in, in different leagues. So sometimes you'll see areas where keepers just come out and go bang, and you think, oh great, that looks brilliant. But in the Premier sometimes it doesn't really yeah, I mean, you think of like when Schmeichel came, you had Kamchelskis on one side and Brian Giggs on the other. So Schmeichel comes, grabs it, those two, they're gone. gone yeah. they're on your bike, down the wings. So they know that he's going to then just launch it with a proper big throw because he was on the first did that. So yeah, what your goalkeeper can or can't do might dictate how you play out from the back maybe. Because then you've got Pickford, who does that fly kick, ridiculous, so therefore Tosin and whoever it is, Calvert Lewin, will just be on their bike straight away. Same with Edison as well. And he'll be, yeah, mm. they'll be looking for the pass because they know that the striker is primed, ready for that distribution. So we're going to go in behind because we're in that situation. Um, so self preservation on that as well. Like the punch is easier than the catch. Early on in that game, that yeah. punch was as well. He might have just not fancy it at all. Yeah. The occasion Don't want to make it. And by not making that early mistake, get out. And he's just tried to do the punch on the some, well. some opposition will look at that and say, oh, we're going to pepper you now because yeah. you didn't catch it. Uh, this one, low dive and save, that's actually probably a collapse and save. I probably labelled that wrong. Um, so you see there, I was trying to get that point about the collapse and save. Your leg is collapsing from under you, and then your legs are going out. So I've labelled that probably incorrectly. It's in between, but for me, that's probably a collapse and save. You know, it's quite close to him. So rather than go with the foot, you just collapse and get your hand low. I think it's quite a good one. Uh, here, that was the attempted low dive and save, but it went in. But you can see there again, you've dived, but the legs have gone up, out of the way, and, and you're making that, that dive in there. But you can see that shape that we had outside. This one here, again, collapse and save, uh, it does it in like three sections. So again, you can see how close it is to him, and it breaks it down. See again how his legs, so his right leg is collapsing, like in this one, it's his left leg. And you notice his right leg there is about to flick out, and you notice there, it already is on its way out. So one collapses and then you flip your legs away to get down low to those ones. The hair may have used his feet there, so some people have just gone there and used their feet. Um, but, and I haven't labelled that one because that's the end of the collapse and save. You know, he's obviously tipped around the post at that stage. Uh, low dive and save that one, that's, what, that's like the perfect technique. If whoever's got the low dive and save, if you've got the low dive and save on, yeah, you guys there, so you'll see the technique. He's saved it, but then he carried it away. So the position is slightly different there. And he's facing forwards. Facing forwards, legs have kicked out, he's yards off his goal line, and you've got that situation where that ball is then shot off out, out that way. And again, see legs, again, straight out, and then you can jump back up if you need to. So you see that with the low guard and say, you know, how you want to obviously tip the ball away from danger, if in that case it's not being gathered, you want to tip the ball away from danger. In that position there, when you've extended your arm, isn't that essentially pushing the ball out in that position there, isn't that? How do you make sure that you don't push that ball? Hand position. So it's your hand position. Hand position. Hand position. Hand position. It's here, so some, if you were just making a save, so at grassroots, uh, amateur players, they will probably just make a save and the ball will drop in front, everyone will go, that's a great save, because you just stopped it. But he's actually angling his hands away, strong wrists, and actually, probably there's a little bit of that motion. Whereas if that was me, I'd just be down and I'd be chuffed. If I, and if someone ran in and knocked him in the net, I'd say, ah. Oh, I was quiet though. But actually, at this level, you'd be expecting someone to angle their hands, strong wrists, and almost lap. Whereas for us, we'll just be parrying that, and that would look good. So yeah, you can see there, he's actually made that motion almost to push it away, and now the ball's out of the shot. That's it. Okay, so that was last night. Sorry, just a, just a question the level five was saying, we see the hand technique. Yeah, this that one? Yeah, as a, as a coach, we see, we're seeing that a lot in keepers nowadays, they're trying to direct it. See, for me personally, I will culture my wingers or uh, forwards to be coming at that angle because anticipating the right and left hand side, he or she is going to push it that way. What would you do as a goalkeeping coach to counteract that? Well, the alternative is you parry it in front of you. Okay. You've, either got a, you've either got to stop it 
obviously you want if they can catch it, great. So if you can have that, great. It's what we call, I didn't show you outside, but if you can, you'd want your goalkeeper to have one hand behind the stopper, and then what we call a topper. Okay. Stopper and topper, so it goes like that. One hand stops it and the other one comes on top. So if you if you could, you'd, you'd catch it or make a save, but you'd have that stopper and topper. Stop it going out, ideally. If you can't, well then, if your wings are coming in that way, where would you put it? I'll throw it back to you, because the only other option is back out into the danger area. So it's a less of a risk. Again, for your team, yeah. I'd rather hit it out that way, and your striker running and speed might get there, but might not, as opposed to hitting it to the centre forward, who's in the six yard box, who definitely will score. I would probably look at probably two things. Obviously, if I know, if I'm realising that now the opposition are coming from at angles, I would always try and have at least one of my centre backs just in front of my keeper, up, position yourself in that zone area. Sure. Right? So it kind of protects that space there, I think it does come back. You out. want the defender probably closing into anyway, just regardless. But I think if you get in a situation where your goalkeeper, because your goalkeeper is going to have to notice that in the game as well, it will become very difficult. Because then you're saying, right, well, I don't want to parry it there. I don't want to parry it there or there. You're then having to, like, well, I've got to parry it like, like a yard gate there. Just get it away. I'd rather it goes that way and your striker gets on the end of one I and mean, parry it back in. Maybe it's a factor in this is speed, speed pace, yeah. and power. The ball is different now than it's ever been. It's Yours is a tactical question. Just making a save. Yeah. Making a save is the best thing. Yeah. Stop that. No, I, 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 I get that. I'm just, I'm just trying to look at from a training perspective where if you're putting the keepers out of the field, would it help them constantly repeating that type of scenario where they can get used to either a panic left or right, but also a different technique and using your defenders? Me personally, position. number one priority is you've made the save. Number two is you've made the save and get it away. Ideally, that way. Great can. question, Tanner. Uh, how many goals are scored when a keeper parries it to the side? True. In at top level, probably very low. Depends if it's the wrist or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Like, it's right. so difficult. Not many goals are scored by that, but a lot are scored when you parry it in front and then yeah. and mops it up. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I was going to use an example because I was going to watch a couple of things with the Spurs on five and a half weeks place or something. So this is hanging inside the area where he had his defence in front of him and he kind of lost his, his bearings. I don't know how that goal went in, but... You, you might be coach, you might your next thing might just be coaching your defence. Like, keeper, make a save, number one priority, make a save, second priority is get it away. Defenders, the what if plan is, well, if, they, if he parries it, how are you going to get there to protect her who's made a mistake? You see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's where my issue would be with if the keeper's made a save and the, and the right winger's just tapped it in on a pose, you've got an issue with your left yeah. back, not with your goal. Yeah. So and that's way. where you would then be coaching your defence. Your goalkeeper's done everything they can, they've saved it, they've got it away, and then someone's tapped it in. Your goalkeeper's right, you'd be standing up going, well, what's, what's going on? Who's tracked that run? No, I, I totally agree. I just, I'll just try and look, flip it in the sense where if I can't really rely on my defenders, can I give my goalkeeper a different technique to, to work to, to take the pressure off the game? I wouldn't complicate it too much personally. Save it, Mark get away. Mark West, like what you just said, he's a goalkeeper, but he's, at the age of 11, he's now been, he's been taught to handle his hands yeah. in that situation. Okay. That's, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a starting point. Um, I didn't cover distribution outside because I knew that I had these fairly good um, posters, which I don't actually know. I've got but the PowerPoint is better. So in terms of our, our England DNA, okay, how we play, this is an in-possession and I will share these with you and you can take photos if you want to. So again, this is, we've got the ball and we're distributing, so it's just going to label it basically. So we're playing around and we've got support with the new rule change this season. You might have your defender in here and here and here and here and here. So that might change slightly, so your supporting role might be, you might give it to your centre back who stood on the edge of the six yard box and you might support at a different angle. I mean, we might even get to a situation where goalkeeper plays the ball to a centre back, and almost, a, and now they're the deepest, so the goalkeeper might actually have to receive forwards, which sounds ridiculous. But you could have a situation where the goalkeeper gives the ball to a centre back in the box, he they get pressed, and the goalkeeper has to go there and be ahead of the defender because that's the new rule. But there's your support when you're playing around. But is this rule not just allowing teams to play out from the back? Because obviously, technically, if you press high for the whole first half and then just keep picking it along. 
now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you do press I, you peek at the top, which we'll come to in a second. So you've got the plane around. What type of distribution are we going to have here? Fly kick. Little side pass. Wow. Yeah. Little side. No fly kick there because you don't want to be fly kicking it <laughs> six yards. So a little side pass, okay. underarm throw, probably in that situation. Maybe drop it and play it out. Can they play through? What we look at? I know you guys talked about this. Uh, Dean, you were talking about your team will be playing into that centre midfielder. Yep. So if you're playing out from the back, play through. Again, what type of pass are we looking at here? Side foot, side foot driven. Yeah, any harder than that, and your centre midfielder is going to be in trouble there. Okay, playing into. So type of. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, you there. could do relatively gentle, or well, that sort of like driven with the laces maybe into that area, or that little chip into the top. So yeah, here, hands as well. oh, right. yeah, a throw in here, or a little dinked pass into the rock, your left or right winger in that situation. So you've got play into, play onto, and then we have play beyond. So what, what, what's that going to look like in practice though? Play onto is going to be playing onto what? Into space, forward. Or yeah, or... Number nine, striker, big striker, play onto the striker, and then obviously you then get in as a team. And then you've got the play beyond, so England start doing this. If you've got Sterling, Rashford, and maybe Kane's not playing, and maybe Lingard, you're maybe going to play onto, sorry, play into, beyond rather, as opposed to Kane where you might play onto, or Shearer and Sutton play onto as opposed to beyond. If you've got, I'm just trying to think of a striker, if you've got Emil Heskey playing in your team, with Michael Owen, you might mix and match. So you might play onto Heskey and you might play beyond for Owen. Yeah, makes sense? And that's where that fly kick comes in, a quick distribution, play beyond, and your strikers are in because they've got a hold of the, the half the play to. Isn't all those distances relative to your team though? Because obviously yep. in, in female football that play beyond probably don't really exist, especially yep. the age group. You, you're exactly there. right. So all, all of it's probably a bit more condensed. Shift everything, you'll play onto, yeah, yeah, for boys and girls younger, it would be here, and your play beyond might be here. Yeah, you're completely right. And obviously, the tactics of your team as well. Your team might have certain tactics which negate these straight away. A lot of coaches, if you said about play beyond, because of their philosophy and they're drilled into playing out from the back, they'd say play beyond, not chance, not doing that. That's not even in our thinking, but it's useful. England use it, Pickford uses it all the time. So it's there if you need it, but you're right, it might just shift this way. And in certain levels, certainly younger players, play beyond is unrealistic to your, some of your players, they just won't be able to do it. And if they do, it might just be the accidental boom and it just goes miles. Um, okay, and then in terms of out of possession, in, obviously this is without the ball in terms of the spaces that we take up. You've got their defending space, so modern trend, we talk about what does a modern goalkeeper look like. Yeah, so traditionally, with the pass back rule, the goalkeeper would probably be always in here, but now you'll notice your goalkeeper will always now probably be almost in this situation. I think it was the, was the FA Cup final. Or what, the, what the goalkeeper played the ball beyond, so did that, and then like the TV camera, you thought, oh, they're in, 1v1. One one. And then suddenly, Edison was just stood there. Like the camera literally turned, and he was there. So he was actually, he was defending here, and the camera panned around, and you thought they were through one on one. And Edison just cleared the ball from there. Like, he was so far up because of the situation that was presented in front of him. So you've got that, and then you obviously got the defending the area and your emergency defending, defending the goal. So obviously as the, as the opposition get closer and closer to the goal, you're going to shrink back towards the yellow, and then you're going to go to the red, obviously, in your goal. But not on your goal line. I can talk about already in terms of you making your saves. Because if you happen to dive backwards or you get taken back slightly, you're going to be in your goal. Does that make sense? I know I've whisked through it, but it, it kind of makes sense in terms of the modern trends. Like I said, I'll share those, I'll leave them up over lunch so you can play around with the slides. And they're on the high group as well. So, uh, I don't know what time that is, but for me I'm pretty much done. That is 12.30 almost exactly. So, we'll wrap up a little bit of a review of goalkeeping this afternoon. We'll, as part of that review, we'll also maybe get outside if we can and get these guys doing a couple of sessions to show us how you would incorporate goalkeepers and you've now got the technique that you can bolt into some of the language that you use later on. Alright? Good stuff, we'll have an hour, same as usual, back can in the last one. Say something quickly? Yeah. Uh, I'll do this publicly. Two and a half years, three level twos, two UEFA Bs. That's the best.
goalkeeping workshop I've seen. Aww. So let's give Ashley a round of applause. He's a goalkeeping coach and no, Jack's has already picked up my technique. I've got a little bit of a shuffle you saying. Oh uh, yeah, you're like you're just free set your ways to do that in the shorts. Hopefully you got something out of it. For me, I've had to go and have a look and improve my goalkeeping. I wouldn't have been able to do that workshop if I hadn't done my goalkeeper level one. I did my coaching back.